Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the second and final video in IB Biology Topic 7, Nucleic Acids, where we will be looking at transcription, regulation of transcription, epigenetics, translation, and proteins. As with the first video in this series, this video requires knowledge from the fourth video in our IB Biology Topic 2 video series, so watch that first. In this video, we introduce the process of transcription as the synthesis of mRNA from DNA. Let's re-explain the process by adding a few more details. One strand of the DNA to be transcribed is referred to as the antisense strand, and the other the sense strand. The sense strand runs in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, and is the strand that will be identical to the transcribed RNA except for thymine in place of uracil. The antisense strand runs in a 3' prime to 5' prime direction, and is the strand that will be complementary to the transcribed RNA. The DNA strand can be considered in three sections, the promoter region, coding region, and terminator region. At the promoter region, RNA polymerase binds to the antisense strand unwinds the double helix and separates the strands, forming a transcription bubble. At the coding region, RNA polymerase binds free nucleotide triphosphates to the antisense strand via complementary base pairing in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This generates a RNA strand with uracil in place of thymine when forming the complementary base pair to adenine. At the terminator region, RNA polymerase stops adding bases. The RNA strand separates from the DNA and the DNA reforms its double helix. Like with replication, it is very common for the IB to ask you to outline the process of DNA transcription in the exam. Make sure you practice this on our question pages. You will likely notice throughout the explanation previously we referred to the product only as RNA, not mRNA. For the IB Biology higher level syllabus, you're expected to appreciate that transcription technically produces immature RNA, a precursor to protein coding mature RNA, known as mRNA. This is an important distinguishment, as immature RNA can come in two forms, introns and exons. Introns are the sections of RNA which do not code for protein, i.e. non-coding regions. Examples of their functions include regulation of gene expression, coding for the production of introns, coding for the production of telomeres, acting as genes for tRNA or RNA. Exons are the sections of RNA which do code for protein, i.e. coding regions. The important concept to understand is that only exons are utilised to form protein coding mRNA. This selection process is known as post-transcriptional modification, and it occurs via the process of alternative RNA splicing, which occurs only in eukaryotes. During this process, the non-coding introns are removed, leaving the coding exons, which are spliced together. It is key to recognise that exons can be spliced in any order. Thus, alternative mRNA splicing increases the range of proteins that can be coded for by a single gene. This is because not all exons need to be included, thus leading to varying amino acid sequences which subsequently alter translation. So, you now know how DNA is transcribed to generate RNA, and in eukaryotes, mRNA. But how do we regulate how much transcription occurs? The regulation of transcription is necessary to limit protein production via translation since all proteins are required at different concentrations and at different times, so it would be wasteful to constantly generate them. You need to recall the methods of regulation in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, proteins bind to DNA during transcription before RNA polymerase. These proteins are known as transcription factors, and they can be enhancers, which speed up transcription, or silencers, which slow down transcription. There is also a small subset of transcription factors known as promoter proximal elements, which are located close to the promoter region 
and are required to initiate transcription. In prokaryotes, proteins bind to DNA at the repressor binding region in response to environmental factors. These proteins are known as protein repressors, and they decrease the rate of transcription. An important term that arises in this context is lac operon. This is a collective term given to the promoter region, repressor binding region, and protein coding gene. A specific example of lac operon that appears in the exam is within E. coli. Let's briefly go through it. When lactose is present, lactose metabolism genes are expressed and so enzymes transcribed to digest lactose are produced. However, when lactose is absent, they are not. This is because when lactose is present, a repressor binding protein binds to lac operon and blocks RNA polymerase from transcribing lactose metabolism genes, i.e. a negative feedback loop. The direct regulation of transcription is one method by which gene expression is controlled. However, for your higher level IB biology exam, you also need to recognise the indirect regulation of the environment on transcription, specifically within eukaryotes, known as epigenetics. The structure of nucleosomes was introduced in our first video of this IB Biology Topic 7 video series. However, we only mention their role of supercoiling. Through alteration of their histones, nucleosomes can move closer or further apart, thereby also altering the ease of transcription and thus controlling gene expression. These alterations can occur in several ways. Firstly, addition of a methyl group which is generally considered to decrease transcription. Secondly, addition of an acetyl group, which is generally considered to increase transcription. And lastly, addition of a phosphate group, which has variable effects. A specific example that can be used to explain epigenetics is that of honeybee diet on development. If bee larvae are fed a diet high in nourishment, they develop to form a queen. However, a diet low in nourishment will cause development to a worker. Changes in this way perfectly showcase a potential debate between nature versus nurture, i.e. how much of who we are is made of our genetics versus our upbringing. So, we have discussed in depth the process of transcription and its regulation, but what about translation? You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.